Third Street Gallery. Um, we are ready for our second artist talk from a very long-standing member of the gallery. Maybe yes. Almost one of the longest standing, which is good when you're still standing already. Uh, anyway, um, Jackie Ferretti uh, is going to talk about uh, her oil paintings that she's been working on recently and how they fit in with her larger corpus of work. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is very different, this group of work that I have here for this particular show. If you look at the title, there's an actual good reason for the title, Lines, Numbers, and Guests, because I started working with this piece, and I'm an abstract painting obvi painter, obviously, and so you never know what's going to happen, you know, because the excitement of painting that way. I wasn't, uh, I had no particular object or theme or anything in, in mind. And I kept seeing the same uh, type of marks and lines. Some of the marks, I'll, and I'll show you with each one, which ones I'm talking about, but they, some have letters and numbers, the, the numbers of five and three kept coming up, for instance, and different, um, different marks that you could see a lot here that kind of go down in rows all right, and this way, and when you come up closer to it, in here, uh, you can see there's a row of, of letters and lines that keep, um, keep showing up. And I, uh, that, was, I, that didn't bother me as I was painting. I just thought, well, that's, that's okay, that's fine. But um, then I went to the next painting, and they kept coming up, and I thought, I'm working on a whole new painting, a whole new canvas. And I went back to my studio and I thought, and those lines are coming back, like they're just showing up. <laughs> this is a new painting. I don't, didn't ask them to do that. You know? <laughs> so it was very strange for me. So I, um, so for instance, in here, this, it's more subtle. Uh, uh, and the, the guests are, so it was lines, lines and numbers, and guests were, there were a lot of uh, uh, human faces, and some of them were kind of horrific and scary. And uh, so I was a little triggered by that and uncomfortable <laughs> because I thought, why, why are these figures showing up? And then I accepted it and, and, I, and I realized, just as uh, artists always do, you know, um, it's your work. Uh, you, you just let ha happen what, what's supposed to happen and just go with it. And there's no reason to question it. It's simply what's going on in your head and how, and, and there's the, the diff, that's what happens, you know. So I went with it, and that's why I called them, I thought, they're guests, you know, I welcome you, you are my guest, welcome. Be where you want to be, and, <laughs> and that's okay, right? So th uh, this one, it's little, this was an older one. This, this one, these are the only two that were, that were paintings that I had already done previously. The rest of them were all, these were all done the last few months. And, but I, after I was putting the show together, I thought, I went back to look at my other paintings in my house, and I thought, wait a minute, the, look, the, there they are. This didn't just happen. You've been doing this. This has been in your work for a long time. <laughs> and so that, that was it. So that made me more like, all right, then it's really just, uh, just part of the, what's happening. And, and this one was the, is one that was different in that there were specific things that I know that I was thinking about. I did not, again, I didn't know what was going to happen, just went into the painting. But I knew, I knew that I was upset about the, uh, the uh, people who were drowning, the children. Uh, they would find them, they would just drown off the boat and, and they would just, you would find them everywhere from, the, in the, from um, on the beach and everything, and, and it was just so horrific. It was, it was in my head when I was painting this, and so, so it just comes up. So I saw, all of a sudden, I saw like a foot, you know, upside down, and this is a, a and again, like I realized it after I painted it, okay, so this is a girl upside down, and subconsciously I, I was thinking that, you know, but didn't know it as I was painting it. But uh, here's one foot and one here, foot. She's, she's falling down, and this is her hair and her head. And, um, and 
after I was finished, I happened to see that, oh, there's a boat right here. And, and people are behind it. And here's all numbers and digits all around, here, 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 all over. And, uh, and letters, like very uh, beautiful, uh, exaggerated letters. You know, so I, and this also comes up, row after row. And I also invite you when I stop talking, <laughs> but if you want to, and I was doing this in my studio, but I have a fast uh, <laughs> here that you can actually see, really. Because I would go, I go, that's really what I'm seeing. You know, th these are animals and people, and, and they are surely there. It's not like you would make a mark and think, oh, if you kind of squint and look at it, it sort of looks like a cat. No, these are animals, like looking right at you. <laughs> so, um, so you can see, when you, if you want to come up and, and kind of look that way, you can see the letters much more clearly. And um, this one is more subtle. I don't know whether you could tell, but, but it's, it's a face. And it's a, I, here's the two eyes and the nose and the mouth. Can you see that? Yeah. OK. And um, this one is hard to see, but there are a lot of anim animals in here. And this one, if you look, look far away, this is a, there's a, a man's a silhouette of a man in there, and also cats and things, you know. And let's see, this one, <clears throat> which I call Portal, um, just had the same feeling, you know, of the other paintings. It had the same kind of a look, you know. But uh, it, re it reminded me of a door, you know, and uh, it also has the same marks all over it. You know, the same kind of little digits and marks going up and down. And if you look really close, um, there are little kind of squared off areas that look like those little silhouettes of like you're looking at in a window or something and there's a whole vision of somebody in their living room. You know, like there's, there's like there's the little stories in each little space. So, and I, and I just, I remember when I made that, I, I for some reason, I, I really loved the figure. And my friend, Mary Beth, kind of laughed at it. She said, it's a, what did you say? It was a pickle or something? Yeah. <laughs> she says, well, it's a pickle. I said, I said no. the shape of it. <laughs> the shape of it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but, but I really like the shape of it a lot. You know, I was really enjoying that. Now this one, if you really use this, you could, you could really see um, the textures of, of faces and animals uh, when you look really close all over it. Um, but I, I really loved this happening because you could see the same digits coming up and down and that they just keep running all around it, you know? And, um, but I, I'm, I really love texture. I love working with things and having a lot of feel to it, you know. And this one is um, a little bit different. Um, so before the black painting went on, it, I painted red. And I loved the fact that, because I didn't want the red, I thought red was too bright and bold. <laughs> so, so that I painted it. But it wants to be there. So it's in certain light, I mean, I thought, wow, you could see the red. It's, it's still there. It's still there whether I want it or not. It's coming. You know, it's going to be there. And then I love all these little different lines and everything that, that were like these textures. And this was the, the last one I did. And um, it's, it's the most simple one. And uh, I, you know, I thought of a nest. You know, with it, a, a bird's nest. Like, this is the nest, and, and this, like, these are birds, you know, just floating. And I'm obsessed with birds, so <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't uh, you know, uh, surprised at that. But I felt like, uh, with every, all the anxiety that I was having with the rest of them, but, but coming to feel better about it and, uh, and appreciate it, what was going on. And this, was like is this was this was kind of ten, it's you don't see all that here it's kind of it's cal it calmed down it's like it's just a calming force at the end <laughs> you know so everything's oil 
And, um, oh, I didn't, I, I forgot to just go a quick background. I was an art teacher for 25 years, and, um, I, and I really got, I'm mostly a painter, and I, I, my master's was in um, meditation, okay, and the effects of meditation on creativity. And I did a lot of study with um, Zen Mountain Monastery, where, I, where I'm a, a member. And they, um, there was so, there's so much about when you're doing your art and how you're thinking about and how you're understanding it, which I've learned from just practicing Buddhism. I, I also am a, a found object artist, in, and I like things like that that you can just redo and find in the trash and so forth and make something out of it. And, um, you know, um, and I, I remember when I was teaching that you know, that a found object art w wasn't a thing then, you know, <laughs> and and that it, it's, it is now, but big time. And I um, I thought that's what most art teachers do. You fa <laughs> you usually have a really small budget, you know, for your your materials and everything. And I remember, you know, pick, taking them to the woods and everything. And we'd pick up whatever we could find on the ground and everything and, and just decide to make up things for it when we'd enter the classroom. And when we did things like that, that were just, and just bring these plastic things that are all round, let's see what happens, you know, things like that. And it was the best, the, the best fun they, all, they usually had because you always have students who are really gifted and have been doing art since they were really little and all that. And you have the ones in the middle, and then you have ones that are just like, you know, the guidance counselor told me to take art, I don't know. And, it's, 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 and this made everybody feel good. I mean, no matter what, because it didn't have to be this thing that looked like an airplane. Like, you know, I am making it up. It's totally out of my imagination. And I, I, I think it was the best work that I, that I enjoyed out of all the other, you know, teaching them pottery and, and painting and all this. The best, when they came up with just junk, and, and, and not, not only like made something like totally cool, <laughs> totally unbelievable, but that they were proud of it. It was like, yeah, you know, I did it. <laughs> so um, anyway, if you, if you would like to look up close, <laughs> you, you have this right here for you, you know. But if anyone has any questions, be glad to answer them. Wiping? I, I squ uh, not as I'm paint. Well, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, yeah. I do. I did. I do an awful. I love to scrape. And I, I yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, like especially this. I, I love to scrape and almost it's just the texture of it. I, and really lit it with my fingers and scrape and and take everything apart. Put paint on it. Take it off, totally destroy it, and start all over again. It's like, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I like to do that yeah. over and over again. We always talk about history, the history of the pieces you're working on. It. Uh huh. And because you're putting it down, you're taking it away. You're putting it down, you're taking it away. And I think that's what's interesting. That as you're doing that, all these things are appearing. And then you know you start to see them. So you're not scraping those away, but you're scraping everything else away. But maybe you are scraping that away, and then something else comes out. Oh, that's true. So, that's true. That's interesting. It's interesting to look at them. Yeah, yeah. There's no tool in my studio that is safe. It could be anything, not 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 an art tool at all. That I will use it. I will, I will use it to push in and like to scrape and to like do any kind of mark. So this like so this mark was just a, as I was finishing it. Uh, it was all it was all the same before I did, and I just took a, some kind of a knife. You know, and I just went, you know, like, <laughs> and it's just, I liked it, you know. <laughs> but it's interesting that it sort of looks like wood, though. Yeah. yeah. When I was kind of uh, anxious about this while I was making all these things, I did go to the library, the, the main library in Philadelphia, and, I, and there was a wonderful uh, librarian who was helping me with it, and she gave me all these books of, of ancient letters. And I, I have been reading those, but it, it just, so I'm, I want to I wanna really investigate that more, you know, because I'm, I'm, I was looking at book after book of, of and, and every, every nationality, every type of, 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 of a letter or mark 
or line or, or even numbers like that. And I was, I was looking at them, I was like, it's just like in my painting, it's just like in my painting, it's just like in my painting, it was weird. So, um, yeah, I, and, I, and I, I tried so many times to, to investigate and look up people who could actually tell me about ancient letters and numbers and words, and, and uh, I can't have, if you ever find that out, <laughs> if you ever find out where I would go, because I've been searching, I can't find anyone who would know that. Seems to be coming through. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but I'm, I'm accepting it. I'm accepting it totally. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, last month, last month, you made the comment because last month Mary, when she talked about her ceramics, uh -huh. talked about the tactile nature of ceramics and how it allowed her to break away from compared to when she does two dimensional art, in which she's sort of stuck in the art school oh. training of the grid and this and that. Yeah, and I remember was, that. So I was just wondering, when, when you start talking about scraping, is that is that a way to escape sort of a more traditional and all the tactical, tactile nature of scraping and doing sort of a way to break with sort of more classical or mainstream training too, a, um, a kind of a freedom from it? I love texture. I, I love texture and to play with clay. And I, don't, I, I love to rip it apart and feel. I'm always feeling it, you know. <laughs> I have to, if you're, I'm awful going into a store or something, I have to touch everything and feel it. I don't want anything to be, uh, the worst thing would be, oh, it's cute, you know, or, so, or it's, it's what everyone would think it should be, you know, like, all right, I won't do it, you know. <laughs> I'm afraid of that sort of thing, you know. Also, have you thought about relief sculpture? Oh, yes, yes. 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 Have you have yeah. you done that too? Uh, uh, in a way, yeah. I, yeah. My my um, stepson uh, gave me. He's a carpenter, and he gave me all this really cool wood, and that, you know that I played with. I did stuff on at my last show, but I I love the fact that they were rough and had holes and yes. I mean, I could see it happening here too on um, these these yeah sort of building out from the yeah possibly yeah yeah. <laughs> you have me excited, yes. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. It was very nice to you. Thank you.